Okay guys, it's about time to start working on some API calls. In this video, we are going to be using Financial Modeling Prep API. Financial Modeling Prep API is an awesome API that allows you to pull all types of great financial data. It's free for 250 requests a day, but if you want the paid version, it's really inexpensive and no shill. I don't have anything to do with them. It's just a really great API if you are a finance nerd. We're going to be using Axios. We're going to be housing our API keys with .env. So let's go ahead and dive in and let's start making this API. So first things first, we want to go ahead and install npm install Axios dot dot save just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this part right here because I don't want to type all of this out. You technically, you don't even need these types. Most of Axios is pretty functional without the types, but the types do add a little bit extra. So if you want them, go, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install them anyway. So going to go ahead and install that and it's save dev because you don't technically need those types for the actual app to function in a environment or when you actually run the app. And then I'm going to also go into here and I'm also going to do MP, copy this npm install dot env. So I'm going to go dot env and go ahead install that. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go into the front end and you want to add the dot env file just like this. So just or uh, just dot env just like this. And then what you want to do is you want to type in react. You could actually make this anything that you want to, but I'm going to make this react API just like this. And this is where you want to type in your key, but I am going to leave that up to you. I can't show you my API key because I have the paid version. So I'm going to go ahead and trust that you guys will paste that key into there. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a separate API file for our API request. You could do the API request directly in the component, but I think it makes things a little bit easier to understand if you put the API call in a separate folder. And I'm going to call this lowercase api.tsx. And I highly recommend you don't have to, I think it will still work if you do TS, but I highly recommend just going ahead and adding the TSX because it seems to work a little bit better when it has the TSX. So, okay, so I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to create a search function because we are going to need to search for a company. So I'm gonna go into here, going to create a async function and I'm going to pass in the query because we're going to need to make a search bar. And in order to do that, we're going to have to pass in the search query data. Going to make a try, try catch because this is an API call. You want to wrap this in a try catch. I wouldn't recommend just hard coding it in there without one because APIs do fail a lot. So I'm going to go into here and we're going to bring in Axios and Axios because we're going to do a git. We're also going to have to make a type for this. And this is also going to bring me to the last part. We're going to go ahead just straight off the straight out the gate we're going to create a separate api or separate type file for all of our types because we're going to be making a lot of types here in a little bit and it's best if we go ahead and make a global one you could put the type just above this if you want to but like i said i'm going to go ahead and try to prepare for all of these types that we are about to make and i'm going to call this company d.ts and also what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you guys all the types that we are going to be using in the project. I don't think it's going to benefit anybody to go and type out all of these types. So what I've done is I'll link a, leave a link down below for all of these types. I would just go ahead, copy, throw all of these types in here. I wouldn't worry about them so much. It's very verbose. And I did all the hard work of going through and creating all of these. So go ahead in there, grab that and paste it in there so you can save yourself a bunch of time. So the next thing that we're gonna have to do is because this is going to be returned as an array, we need to create an, another interface to wrap around this so that we can correctly type our Axios call. So we're gonna go into here 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, need to change that, spelled that wrong. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say data, and this is going to be company search, and we are going to return an array. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that in from our type file right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this search response into the Git. And as you can see, this is going to type our actual response. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go into financial modeling prep and we need to get the link for doing the search. So I'm going to go down into here and I'm going to type in search right here. And you can go ahead and copy this right here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy this. And next thing that I'm going to do is just go ahead and paste all of this into the app. So I'm going to go into here and go ahead, paste that in, and we are going to make a template literal. So in order to do the .net, .net e or .env, what you need to do is put a dollar sign and then go into here, type in process. So we say process dot, then we're going to type in react dot underscore app slash API, just like that. That should do it for our API string. The next thing that we need to do is we need to actually return this data. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a semicolon right there. You don't, technically you don't have to, and I am going to return all of this beautiful data that we are going to get back from the API, but we can't stop there because we need to do our catch. Now catch, if you're familiar with TypeScript, you may be tempted to do this, but with Axios, it's really hard to do that. You have to create all of these generics. And what Axios does is it gives you neat little methods so that you don't have to worry about typing it. You can just actually add these methods and it will pretty much do, oh, pretty much like a form of checking to make sure that it is indeed a Axios error. And if it's not, it will give you another log message so we're going to go into here we're going to say error message just like this and go ahead put a space right here you're going to type in error dot message go ahead do that and it will return an error dot message if it is a error next thing we're going to do an l so if it's not it will say something long lines of unexpected error. So this is a more dangerous error. So if your API is not working, you can just open up the console and you can see that a dangerous, very dangerous error has occurred as opposed to a just regular run of the mill error that you see with Axios if your API doesn't work. So I'm gonna say an unexpected error has occurred. Now that we have that all taken care of, the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually test this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my index here and I'm just going to do this and then comment it out, but I'm going to bring in search companies and also wrap this in a console log. You don't want to do this too often. Once we get this set up better and once we get more of our components working, we can just test it inside the component. But for right now, let's go ahead and just throw in Tesla just to see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to go into here. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run npm start and we're, we will see if it is indeed working. So went ahead, did the pop-up and we're going to go into here. Let's see, we've got a promise back and we have all of this juicy Tesla data. Our API is working, we are ready to go. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.